Hey everybody, Sean Tubbs here. Thanks for tuning in. This is the Two Notes Torpedo Studio digital uh, load box. Now, full disclaimer on this demo, it's not gonna be uh, necessarily an in-depth demo. It's not overly complicated, but at the same time, I, I was more into the idea of, of just showing you guys how I arrived at my sounds uh, using this, using uh, IRs that I chose, uh, whether it was a third-party IR or a two notes IR, and also how I ran this. I ran it uh, very simply. Now it's got, you know, stereo line in, stereo line out. It's got digital in and out. Um, you can run this pretty much any way you want. And of course you can run it as a load box for your amplifiers, which is exactly what I did. And you can choose between either a reactive load or a resistive load, which would be more of a static load. I left it uh, in reactive load because that just feels much better. That feels much more like a speaker would feel. You can do all the editing uh, from the front end on this guy, on the front panel, but I decided to go ahead and use the editing uh, software uh, that you can download, and that made it much quicker and easier for me to just kind of find uh, the cabinets I wanted to use and, and just dial things in really quickly. And the other thing I really dug is because you can go online to the, the boutique, you can actually audition anything you want. And then if you decide you want it, you can go ahead and, and download it either to your computer or to your, uh, your uh, two notes, uh, the torpedo. So this is a fabulous piece of equipment. It sounds great. I had zero problems. Uh, getting tone styled up. Now, I would love to hear from you guys as to, uh, especially what kind of IRs are you guys using? Now, I'm really simple. I tend to just pick two or three IRs that will work in several different combinations, but I know a lot of guys uh, really get into IRs, so it'd be interesting to, to kind of hear what types of uh, IRs you guys are using. So, you know, please put that in the comments below and also let me know what style you're playing with those IRs or even, you know, if you want to mention the amps you use with those IRs. Or maybe some of you guys are actually running direct into this using preamps, using the, uh, the amp uh, simulation uh, and, and going that route. I'd love to hear about that. So yeah, definitely comment below. I'd, I'd love to hear where you guys are at with all that. So yeah, without further yammering, uh, let's get into how I arrived at the sounds for that opening song. <laughs> Okay, let's get into how I got some of these sounds for that opening song. I think I'm just going to use my Sir uh, Classic Pro for this part of the demo. Now, obviously, I did use some different guitars for the song, but this will give you a really good idea, and we can focus on the IRs and uh, amps that I used. Now, the signal chain is as follows. I'm going to use my Sir Classic Pro into my pedal board, into my Ampete uh, Engineering uh, amp switcher, into a uh, speaker out of that, into the speaker in on the Torpedo uh, Studio, and then I'm gonna run left and right uh, XLR out into my Apogee Quartet left and right line inputs. Um, super simple setup. I didn't wanna go with uh, you know digital uh, ins and outs or anything like that. I wanted to keep it as, as simple as uh, possible because that's just kinda, <laughs> that's kinda how I roll. Okay, so the sound you're hearing right now is a pretty good approximation of uh, the tone that I got at the top of that song. So that is my Friedman uh, Dirty Shirley amp dialed with a, a little bit of breakup. And then the IR I chose for this uh, was the Celestian uh, 4x12 uh, V30 IR. I'm a really big fan of uh, V30s, and I thought uh, that Celestian IR was, was really accurate. Now, uh, the mics I used uh, were a uh, 57 and a 121, and you guys uh, know that that's kind of my favorite mic combination. And normally, I like to record uh, in mono. In this case, you're hearing uh, somewhat stereo uh, signal right now, but for the most part, I like to keep things uh, mono because what happens is when I'm layering guitars, I end up needing to push everything one way or the other. But in this case, if you look at how I have things panned, I've got the, uh, the ribbon mic 
pan slightly to the right and I've got the uh, 57 pan slightly left and it did give kind of a, a more spread out tone. <laughs> Now we can pan these guys hard uh, right and left. Let's go ahead and push them. And that sounds cool. Now because I've got the 57 backed off a little bit in the way I had it mixed, it's a little left side light. But you kind of get the idea. But I did like them just slightly panned out uh, for that tone. So they're back in. Now I did add um, just a little bit of EQ only on the 57 side, um, just a little bit uh, of low end bump. That's, that's it. That's all that happened there. Now if you look at the settings, uh, You've got Verify, Overload, and the Dry Wet. Now Dry Wet, I've got no reason to want to blend uh, dry into anything at this case. So it's uh, you know all the way to the, uh, the wet side or the affected side. Uh, this Overload setting is kind of giving you uh, an approximation of, of how a, a speaker uh, might start breaking up the harder you hit it because speakers don't just you know, stay perfectly clean no matter how hard you're hitting the amp, especially, uh, you know, lower wattage, 30 watt, 60 watt, 30 watt, 25 watt speakers and down will actually start to kind of break up and have their own kind of natural compression. Now, in this case, I've got the overload at about 49% because I, I just thought that felt really good. Now, if I turn that down, or I'll just turn it off. It's a little bit brighter, but it's more of a feel thing. It's, it's a little more uh, immediate. But for this rhythm track, it just felt better. Um, I can hear a little bit more low end coming in there. So that's how I had that set. Um, the, uh, the verify setting, I pretty much, as, as cool as it is, uh, I, you know, it's, it's kind of for phase issues and you can dial that in to purposely create different sounds. But in this case, I don't, and I'll show you, I don't really move my mics out away from the cabinets. I like to keep them close. So I'm less apt to have uh, phase issues. And for the most part, I don't care to create a phase issue, even though that, that can be a tone. Like, like if I turn the verify up a little bit, See how it starts to sound kind of phasey? And that could actually be kind of cool. Maybe for kind of a nasty blues sound. But for the most part, I, I leave that stuff off. And then if you look at, uh, especially on my 57, I have it just slightly off center. So I'll go ahead and solo that up. So it's just the 57. Now, if I start moving that mic off center, Now, where I'll move the mic more off center is when I am using it by itself. But in this case, you can kind of hear it's, it's getting a little bit softer in the top end. The low end is kind of changing. If I put it dead centered, pretty bright. There's more low end, but it's pretty spiky. So I move it off just a little bit. And then it blends really well with my uh, 121. So here's just the 121. And then here's the 57. And then the two together. So it works really well. Um, that's a, just a great sound. Um, now I did mention I've got just a little bit of EQ on the, uh, the 57 side, but it's really subtle. So that's how I arrived at that sound. Okay, let's move on to uh, the, uh, the kind of crunch sound that I was using. And what I did is another cabinet I really liked on this was uh, I downloaded the, uh, the Greenback uh, 
cabinet from Celestion. So I'll go ahead and switch to that. You can hear right away, it's, it's softer sounding. Um, it's a little bit more squishy in feel. And I have it set up uh, with, you know, a little bit of overload again, because I just wanted it to be kind of spongy. I'm still using uh, 57 and a ribbon, but in this case, I have them panned uh, straight up for this sound, because I really wanted it to be a summed uh, blend. Now, what I did is I switched from the Friedman to my Rev amp. I'll do that on the amp switcher my Rev 740 in the green channel. And normally I'll use that for my blues kind of stuff. But I really liked it for that crunch sound. Now I was using a, my Friedman, uh, my Friedman Telecaster, it's got uh, uh, P90s in it. But you can kind of get an idea the I did the same thing with the mics. It's the 57, just off center a little bit. The uh, the uh, ribbon mic, the 121, is dead center. Um, the distance is uh, you know right up on the cabinet for proximity effect. Now uh, the one thing I did uh, like for this uh, setting too is I could turn on reverb. And I thought it sounded really nice, not for necessarily, I just kind of stumbled on how cool it sounded, not necessarily for the track I did, but. So that's the reverb. That's the reverb off. And then here's the reverb on. And just for the heck of it, here's just the 57. And here's just the Royer. Here's the two together. So that's how I arrived at that sound. Um, now for the solo sound, I ended up switching uh, back to the V30 cabinet. And what I did was uh, put everything uh, centered. So nothing was panned, everything was straight up. Um, I added uh, some reverb. And then I ended up switching to uh, my Bella head, which I also used for uh, clean tones uh, on that song. And I turned on uh, my uh, Archer uh, Clean Boost by J Rocket Audio into my uh, my Majestic, or, uh, sorry, my uh, Rocket Pedal's Majestic pedal. I just thought that sounded great. And then the only thing I added was uh, the reverb. did as well is I um, I did turn the overload off um, because I wanted it to be pretty immediate. I didn't necessarily want the speaker to have a lot of um, uh, sag to it. Um, and also uh, the reverb was only on the ribbon side. I didn't, that's the other thing. I mean, you can link everything, the reverb, the compression, the exciter, all that stuff can be linked so it's on both cabinets. 
Um, but in this case, I, I just liked it on one or the other. Sometimes I would use it on just the 57. Sometimes I'd use it on uh, just the, uh, the uh, ribbon mic. Now, the next thing I'm gonna show you is how I arrived at that. There's a clean sound in there uh, during the solo that you can hear, it's kind of an arpeggiated thing. What I did is I stayed on my Bella amp and I switched or I chose a couple of different IRs this time within the same uh, program. So I called it my clean rig. And what it is, is it's the Silver 77 on, on one side and on the other side, it's the, uh, the, the B Deluxe. Um, now both these cabinets are very um, kind of American uh, fender obviously in nature. Um, but what I did is I took advantage of um, some of the uh, post-processing on the, uh, the two notes to get the sound. So what I ended up with, and oh, and I used my, uh, my timeline for the delay, but what you were hearing was Now in this case, I'm using two different cabinets, which is so cool that you can do that uh, on this particular uh, setup. I, so I've got, now these aren't panned. What I wanted to do was blend them. Now if I pan these guys out a little bit, or how about a lot of bit? It'll sound more like this. Now to me, that sounds even better, but when you're trying to put that into a mix and you know you're gonna have to probably put things one way or the other, it was just easier for me to go ahead and center them up and just blend them. And it still sounded great. So I'll just solo up. Here's just the, the deluxe and it's got a ribbon mic on it. So that's warmer. And then here's the silver, and it's got a dynamic mic on it, 57. And then here's the two together. Now I did use EQ, I used EQ on both sides. Um, I, I added 2K and 6K. Um, and a little bit of low end on both sides. I am using the compressor um, to kind of boost the signal, but also give it some squish so it stays really clean. So what I can do is I'll just shut all the post effects off. I can just bypass them. So here's just the, uh, the cabinet. <laughs> Here's the uh, post effects. And I was really impressed with the fact that I could do that just kind of on the fly because uh, when you're you know developing uh, tracks for a song, um, sometimes you it, you just need things to fit. So it was it was nice to be able to just go ahead and turn on some EQ. Uh, turn on some compression. Even though it did bring a little bit of noise into it, it didn't matter in the track. It certainly doesn't bother me, but it really brought out that clean tone and, and made it easier to place within everything else that was going on. So I, I really dug that. So yeah, that's uh, how I used uh, the Torpedo uh, Studio. Um, it's a really uh, usable, great sounding uh, work tool. Um, if you've got any questions, obviously go to the Two Notes uh, website and, and check things out and ask away. And as always, I really appreciate you guys tuning in and um, we will see you next time.